Mark Darcy is a Tory. They just have a very enthusiastic boning over there. <laughs> you can come for me, but I will run. Just to elevate the look before we fall in the mud. I am Bridget Jones, screams every middle-class white woman <laughs> at the top of her lungs during the 90s and noughties. And I was one of those women, nay, girl. <laughs> I first read Bridget Jones when I was about 12 years old because I'd read my way through the kids section in the library and I had ventured, <laughs> because my mum used to leave me alone in the library, to the adult section, of which Bridget Jones was one of the more wholesome finds. To be a Bridget Jones fan is perhaps, in 2021, rather basic. And I found myself questioning at the age of 31 whether I am Bridget Jones. Do I have an incredibly meta, self-aware relationship with what society wants of me and yet bow to it most of the time anyway? Yes. Do I aspire to wear sophisticated sexy lingerie and always end up in these? <laughs> Also yes. Do I spend 50% of my time trying to be educated on the political turmoil of the world and having feminist rants whilst spending the remaining 50% of my life thinking about my thighs? Ding, ding, ding. That's three pairs in a row, my friends. But would I turn down a trip to Paris to snog a man that vaguely hated me about 40 minutes ago? <laughs> No! I'm not saying I'm perfect, but I think I could probably do at least one better. You might have seen on my channel, I like to make videos with the climate in mind, and something that has been a small but significant preoccupation for me is how many clothes already exist in the world, and how we can't bow to fashion anymore if we're gonna truly love these clothes and absorb them into our lives without needing more, especially needing to reduce more. So I've been perusing Depop to experiment with new bits of clothes that I might not have otherwise worn, have some fun, Fun with some secondhand items and encourage you to do the same. Not around trends or fashion, but around genuine inspiration. Like I said in my how to build a wardrobe you'll actually wear video, Billie Eilish comes and goes, but the sound of music is forever. So today I'm going to be taking some inspiration from Bridget Jones, picking up some secondhand clothes to combine with my existing wardrobe and doing seven days of Bridget inspired outfits. <laughs> but I hope you enjoy the outfits I came up with and also my brief interjections the whole way through the video because I have some Bridget Jones hot takes that I thought I could offer up as a side dish to the outfits to get us chewing the fat on what we love and what we don't love about Bridget Jones. But first, before we get to the outfits, if you have enjoyed being here so far and you think you might want to be here again, make sure you subscribe so we can hang around and chat books and problematic faves all day. So come the fuck on Bridget, let's get on with the outfits. Monday. So it's day one and we've already had a little bit of a Bridget Jones moment. So you know how when people send you stuff from Depop in like a plastic bag and they fold it over and then you like cut it open? <sighs> there was some of the material for today's top in the fold as I cut it. So <laughs> we've got a loose sleeve and a little bit of a racy slit up the side now, but we'll see if we can make this work. Today is gonna be like your tits in that top. P.S. Like your tits in that top. So I've got my is skirt off six skirt. I've got my see-through pink top, some sheer tights, a very 90s hair clip, and of course, a black bra. <laughs> So I tried to make the missing triangle in the top work as like a tie top, but that didn't work. So I've just tucked it in and hoped for the best. I think I got away with the sleeve just by rolling it down. Although I did consider this very modernist bracelet as an addition to the outfit. This doesn't look as bad as I thought it was going to. I actually think I'd have probably got away with wearing this to work. I did that lazy 90s coil clip thing with my hair that apparently isn't cool anymore, but I have continued to do throughout my life. And yeah, generally feel very prepared to fan around with the press releases. I 
Okay, I'm in a really good mood today and uh, the way I'm doing this project is I've sorted out all my outfits and I've put them in order in my wardrobe because I'm very cool. Um, but I'm not prescribing myself what days I wear stuff and I suggest if you want to do an experiment like this you do that too so it doesn't feel too prescriptive and you still get to play. So today, because I'm in such a good mood, I feel like having a celebration. And my favourite celebration in all of the Bridget Jones films is her mum and dad's renewing of their vows. <laughs> Just the right amount of extra, especially the bridesmaids. This is what Bridget Jones looks in her bridesmaid outfit. It's kind of supposed to be tasteless because her mum is like upper middle class with aspirations but doesn't know what taste is. Um, but justice for Mrs. Jones, I think this is actually a really bold and forward thinking choice in um, bridal attire. Uh, and I will be mimicking it with my outfit today. Are you ready? <laughs> I'm unsure whether I've created a masterpiece or a monster. Perhaps it's a little bit of both. I trawled Depop for weeks to try and find not just a fluffy lilac jumper, but a feathery lilac jumper. And it turns out a few years ago, Zara did a line of these. But I found this for 11 pounds, including shipping. And it's 100% not something that I would have bought without doing this challenge. But now it's on my body, I kind of love it. I paired it with these lilac jeans from Lucy and Yak that I've had for a little while. Yes, I have these jeans in three colors. You can come for me, but I will run. And I'll look stylish while doing it. And then I decided if I was going to be true to the tastes of Bridget Jones' mum, I was gonna have to go a little bit further, a little bit more eccentric, a little bit extra. So I found these fluffy earrings for £2.50 on Depop as well, from a small shop that I'll link below. And I think it really completes the, I meant to do this. <laughs> fluffy look. This wasn't an accident. I also did some purple themed makeup, not just the eyes, but some, if you can see that purple highlight slightly. And then also this purple tinted lipstick. It's actually one of the refillable ones from Lush. It's called Ankara and I think it's fucking fab. I'm feeling pretty good about this outfit. It, uh, lilac isn't like a colour that I go to. Obviously I have these like light purple jeans, but I've never really like gravitated to lilac as a colour. But I actually think it kind of suits me. I didn't expect this. I always think it looks amazing on my friend Grace who has a taste like this. She looks amazing. But maybe this is a colour for me. I would definitely wouldn't have guessed it, but I kind of, yeah, maybe. Hot take intermission number one. No one ever said Bridget Jones was poor. <laughs> when the criticism came out that, you know, I was, I nodded along to at the time was that like, how did Bridget Jones afford this flat in zone one? It's so beautiful when she just has these quite basic jobs. And actually, fun fact, I have done Bridget Jones's job, meta Lee, meta Lee? It, I feel like there's another word there, but we don't have time to find it. Uh, in the office that Renee Zellweger actually trained in before she went on the set of Bridget Jones. I did fanny around with the press releases. That was me. Have I done a talk like this? Yes, but my therapist said it's best not to dwell on those moments. For me, the biggest lie about the portrayal of the publishing industry in the Bridget Jones films is that there are eligible straight men in publishing. <laughs> anyway, we're not talking about that. We're talking about the economic status of Bridget Jones. It dawned on me that I wasn't actually that confused confused about her flat because the way I'd read the books and the films was that it was very obvious that she was a privileged person. After all, she is supposed to be mimicking Elizabeth Bennet, also an incredibly privileged person. Bridget Jones is a retelling of Pride and Prejudice. I thought that was a given, <laughs> but everyone's so confused that she has a nice flat. And I guess there's also a different cultural thing between different countries and how they display wealth. But as a British person, her family, her clothes, her house, all read previously upper middle class, now rich. From their house to their accents to the circles they move in to the casual phrases they use, I'm off to Bedfordshire. While her parents aren't the most privileged at the party, they're in the room. They are obviously in those circles. The holidays that she goes on, the places that she doesn't notice, she's not like, she doesn't turn up to a ski holiday and is like, oh, this is my first ski holiday. She shit at it, but she's not saying it's her first time. She runs in the circles of journalists and high up businesswomen and ex-pop stars. Hello. <laughs> While Bridget doesn't always have the attitude to fit a certain party or situation, she always has the dress 
for it. She quits her job without worrying about money and there's no after shots of her rifling through bills wondering about how she's gonna pay her rent. If she is in fact paying rent on that flat because to me it's kind of like very plausible and not outside of the realms of the story that her parents own that flat in zone one. Oh yes that's actually where we met that was our first nest egg before we moved to the suburbs when we say we are all Bridget Jones we it's the same kind of thing of us saying we're all Elizabeth Bennet there is a weird disconnect with our fetishization of period dramas I think we are probably oversaturated with stories of the elite but that's not necessarily the job or the promise of Bridget Jones. It's not supposed to be representative, it's supposed to be a rom-com about the elite and I kind of thought that everyone kind of got that. So I, 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 I get the confusion about the flat thing but I also don't get the confusion about the flat thing. <laughs> Next outfit. So today I wasn't sure what outfit to wear and then I looked outside. It is pissing it down out there and I am about to go and try and hang out with my friends in a garden so obviously it has to be festival day and festival day means white. <laughs> These videos are supposed to be challenging me and I hate wearing white not because I don't think it looks nice on other people so I don't think it looks nice on me and also I am awful at not spilling my meals down me and not to be that quirky girl, but I genuinely do have a lot of accidents. <laughs> a lot like Bridget Jones. But I found some very cheap white jeans on Depop and I'm ready, I'm ready for the challenge. Let's go. Rainbow clothes, if I die while doing this, just know that I always love you. Okay, viewers meet only white top I own. Only white top I own meet viewers. Hi. This is really my only option apart from buying a white jumper, but I feel like I'm so certain that I'm not gonna keep the white jeans that it just felt disingenuous to also get a white jumper. As you can see, the jeans are a bit tight. There's a reason I stopped wearing skinny jeans and if I just had one image to explain why, it would be this. But they're not too uncomfortable. I think I can get through the day in them. This is supposed to be reminiscent of the festival look that Bridget does in the third film because she is too posh to have ever been to a festival before. And I thought I'd feel really uncomfortable in this outfit, but I don't feel not me. I mean, obviously I chose the kind of white stuff I'd be wearing. And maybe if I was gonna have something that wasn't all white, I'd put like a colorful belt with this shirt, but I honestly don't hate it. And actually maybe I can go full this isn't appropriate for a festival. Put some silver hoops in, just to elevate the look before we fall in the mud. Okay, let's take some pictures. Hot take number two. The mentions of food in Bridget Jones are not problematic. Are they awkward? Yes. Are they potentially triggering for some people? Totally. Would they get published today? Maybe in a softer way, not quite. But as I've said in other videos, literature isn't there to print your perfect characters, it's there to print the possible. And Bridget Jones's problem and calorie counting and um, over mediation of her relationship with food is not only incredibly possible but incredibly accurate not only for women then but a lot of women now there is a debate around whether you should print like some a character's ideal weight in a book or at least not without a trigger warning of some kind but her relationship with food isn't inherently problematic it's just true and she critiques it the whole way through the book it's actually one of the things that made me feel less alone when i had issues with food rereading bridget jones always made me feel like i wasn't alone um, and she also encourages herself to eat more food at some point in the book and then realizes that that's also an unhealthy way <laughs> to do stuff when you over congratulate yourself for overeating because she's still being controlled by her own expectations of her behavior and how she wants other people to perceive her as like a real rad feminist <laughs> so the book is really about her search for imperfect and how she always feels like she's doing the wrong thing. Emma from Book Break actually made a really great video all about that, which I'm gonna link below. Um, and I totally agree. I think that just labeling Bridget's behavior as problematic and like, oh, well, we shouldn't read that book anymore. It's so outdated. Doesn't really face the fact that women did go through that during the nineties and the noughties, whatever class bracket they were in, and they're still going through it now. It doesn't mean that it's necessarily gonna be helpful for everybody to read it, but as somebody who does struggle with food, I find it incredibly helpful to be able to laugh at my own behavior and the 
contradictions within my own thoughts and process them alongside Bridget. So day four, I had a lovely time in my white jeans yesterday and you'll be jubilated to hear that despite having some incredibly stringy cheese, I didn't deface them whatsoever. Apart from maybe a little bit of scrambled egg on the collar in the morning, it was overall not an unpleasant experience. Uh, but today we move into the what is perhaps more ambitious phase of planning Lena's cunning scheme. Uh, because I wanted to recreate this outfit. <laughs> it is iconic. Have you ever thought about almost all 90s and noughties films have at least one scene where the main character is in a bunny suit? Let's not think about it too hard. Anyway, today apparently I'm cleaning my house in this and I was just planning on wearing pants, but actually I think I'm gonna need more privacy than that. So I might put on a leather skirt or something instead. Let's go, shall we? So this is what we've got, Depop, two quid. It's kind of giving me more Minnie Mouse in mourning for her copyright claims, but uh, I don't hate it. Today is gonna be a joyful day, so I'm gonna tuck away <laughs> the veil part. We can mold these into, yeah, it's just a very tiny bunny rabbit. Now the only real great shame, both these clothing items are things I already had. This is a top from Vivian of Holloway that has some very, <laughs> pointy, pretty fake, I'll be honest, vintage boobs. They just have a very enthusiastic boning over there. <laughs> and then I thought, I, instead of just wearing pants, um, I would wear the, my leather skirt, which I really, really love. Cheating because I wore it on day one, potentially. But I hadn't actually thought of putting these two bits of clothing together. Usually I put this with like a 50s kind of skirt. It's definitely more deliberately sexy than it's my comfort zone, but I'm excited to fanny around the house uh, this Sunday and just give everything a bit of a clean. All looking slightly sultry. Maybe once the cleaning's done, we'll pop into a Tarts and Vickers party. Who can say? Number three. <laughs> the hill I will die on. Mark Darcy is a Tory. It may not be so obvious if you've just watched the first film and not the rest of the films or read the series of books. You should read the rest of the series, by the way. It's actually bloody hilarious and great. <laughs> but don't be alarmed because uh, I'll just say that a different person dies is very... <laughs> yes, Mark Darcy is a human rights lawyer, but he also has a real big obsession with lineage. One of Bridget and Mark's biggest fights is over the fact that he doesn't want his children to mix with poor people. We only see him really defending intellectuals who have had problems with their own governments. Nothing systemic or poverty related, which is still amazing work, but not exactly Marxist behavior. Also, he is so powerful that he is able to talk his ex-girlfriend out of a maximum security prison after she smuggles a butt ton of cocaine. But not once does he extend that power to even comment on the treatment of the other women in the prison. I know he's busy, but you'd think by at least film three, he'd turn around and be like, Bridge, now I'm retired. What say we go and pick up your friends back in that Thai prison back there? Imagine if there was like a fourth wall clip in the last film where you saw or the same women in the same prison wearing Bridget Jones's bras and sleeping on copies of Men Are From Mars, bitterly muttering the lyrics of Like A Virgin to themselves as they picture Bridget biting into a massive chunk of chocolate on the arm of Mark Darcy. It doesn't make me feel as warmly towards him, if I'll be honest. Now, I'm not saying she should have ended up with Daniel Cleaver, even though she does at least visibly laugh in his presence. Had some really good dirty limericks, probably wouldn't send his kids to private school and could at least be persuaded to vote Lib Dem. But a life lesson, I guess, is this dichotomy isn't real. It's not Mark Darcy or Daniel Cleaver. There's quite a few men in the middle who would willingly make up rude rhymes in a boat with you and also maybe at least let your kids go to a comp. After all, this is fiction and thank God. <laughs> Okay, today is absolutely tipping it out there. It looks so sad, which means that we are really in need of some Christmas spirit and I have the perfect outfit. I'm going in, I'm going for this. <laughs> now. Okay, 
Okay, so this outfit has a little bit of a story to it. Now, if you'll remember, this is the occasion where Bridget turns up very hungover. Her mum insists on dressing her so that she looks super eligible. And then Mark Darcy calls her verbally incontinent spinster who drinks like a fish, smokes like a chimney and dresses like her mother. So quite clearly what she wears isn't supposed to be very cool. However, these collars back in fashion and it was quite easy to find a dress to replicate the kind of red shirt that she has. And then she's wearing this, <laughs> sorry Bridget, fuck ugly waistcoat. And there were some on Depop, like if you type in tapestry waistcoat, it's a journey, it's a journey. But they're all like quite expensive, they were more than I would like to spend on something that I would definitely never wear again. But tapestry is not a keyword that I put into Depop before. And there were some really cool things there, like I would love a tapestry biker jacket. Oh my God, a tapestry bag. Like, why isn't tapestry core a thing? But on the waistcoat front, there wasn't really anything for me. Now, you know that my journey with waistcoats has been sporadic at best. If you've watched my Mean Girls video, you'll know. So I do own a waistcoat, and I think it might be the only waistcoat I will ever like. So I figured this would give off the feel of the verbose spinstership we're going for. And instead, I managed to source these incredibly saucy, <laughs> tapestry heels oh my lordy handsome enough to tempt me they were about a fiver material and shape wise they are 100 me but they are something that i would never have picked out myself self because i'm really not sure about the missing heel thing i never got this like these are clearly these would be incredible boots but why have you got to do that why have you got to turn them into sandals why that's part of the video. I'm willing to try them. And what's important is that I really believe that Mama Jones <laughs> would approve. And I also picked gray tights because I wanted it to look a bit dowdy, a little bit awkward. I thought the black tights might elevate the look and bring it out of its tragic Christmas background. And then of course the ultimate Bridget accessory. Some women carry handbags, but I imagine that Bridget would be carrying some mince pie flavored gin. No, no. Fine, just me. So those were the outfits and those were my hot takes. Thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, this very strange concept for a video was made possible by the Gumption Club, who thankfully believe in my strange brain and like me creating these. So if you'd like to be one of the people who makes these videos free for everybody and possible in general, you can go in the description below and read all about the Gumption Club. If you enjoyed this video, here are some other videos I think that you might like. If you had a nice time, make sure to subscribe so we can hang around together again. Frogs Dog out.